What is up, DCS crew? So, uh, previously, we have worked with uh, Ostop Hell's uh, designs. I've, I've uh, owned a few. I've reviewed a few. Um, I've gone through the uh, Real Steel, uh, the G5 Metamorph. Uh, excuse me, the G3. No, excuse me. Yeah, the G5 Metamorph. Um, I've done the Best Tech Tulip, the Best Tech Ivy uh, recently. And uh, this guy is actually uh, the next in line. So I think that O-Stop may be the most reviewed uh, <laughs> artist or designer that I've had on the channel, which is a good thing because the truth is his designs are, are very functional. Uh, they're aesthetically pleasing. I mean, they're very nice. And this is no exception. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, Wii Knife Company Moat or the Wii Moat. <laughs> uh, like a lot of people uh, call it. So um, this right here is the bronze uh, anodized and stonewashed uh, moat. This is uh, model number 2005A from Wee Knife Company. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this right after the intro and talk about whether this should be in my pocket and whether it should be in your pocket. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome back DCS crew. Now, um, I can give you the whole spiel and kind of give you the foreplay before the actual performance. Um, and I've done that before, but let's go ahead and get down to brass tacks, shall we? Um, this is the Ostop Pell designed uh, moat from We Knife Company. Now, uh, there's a lot to like about this little knife. I first ran into this knife uh, in January of 2020, prior to the pandemic, where I attended SHOT Show 2020 with my buddy, Eric from the Outer Limitless uh, YouTube channel. So we uh, we got to stop by the We slash Zavivi booth and um, David Sun was kind enough to go over um, the knives from We Knife Company with me and the Civivi knives with Eric. This one in particular, it um, it got my attention and it was one of those that they did have on display. Um, the, the thing about this particular knife was um, just the overall look and the aesthetics, it really drew my attention. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there's a lot to, you know, to look at, it's, it's kind of got that rustic look, but it's got, um, a couple of things really going forward. It has this nice sweeping belly here, but if you notice, the tip isn't very um, pointy. It's uh, it's almost blunted a little bit, but I can tell you for, I mean, from experience, it's nice and sharp. Um, they did have these in a variety of different anodized uh, scales. Uh, these uh, scale options were actually pretty dope. Um, and the, um, the blade, uh, uh, finish was actually something that really caught my eye as well because it was um, it was weathered just like the uh, the scales and I'll get to that in a moment. But S thirty five VN steel, you know, it's an O stop held design. Um, you know, titanium little pocket clip, uh, titanium scales. I mean, a lot to really like about this knife. And uh, he, you know, we we uh, we spoke with David over at the uh, the Wee booth. He introduced us uh, to a couple of models, and then this one in here. Um, we talked about for a little bit and um, yeah, I mean, as soon as I heard about it, I'm like, man, I got to get one of these in my hand. So as soon as it was available, he, um, uh, I guess somebody from We Knife Company got together with somebody from the uh, Apex Pass Around, shout out to Apex Pass Around, and they sent one over to me to check out. So uh, here we are. Now, as far as size is concerned, let me go ahead and just start by comparing it with a couple of other really good smaller options. This is the Kershaw Knives uh, Automatic. This is from their launch series. This is the Launch 11, courtesy of uh, Tier 1. Uh, go ahead and check out his page at Tier 1 Knives. Really, really nice guy. He was nice enough to go ahead and provide us that. Um, this is the Kershaw Shuffle 2. As you can see, it's kind of, it's curved, but as uh, the overall length is actually very similar to that of the Moat. Let me go ahead and take this out of the way here and uh, put something else. This is the CGRB Feldspar. This is the small model, okay? And uh, as you can see, I mean, it's 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 not a very big knife. In fact, it's it's a little bit smaller, quite a bit smaller actually than the uh, Feldspar small. Um, this is another CGRB. This is the Crag um, with the, uh, the new lock that they have. Uh, D2 steel, really, really badass design significantly bigger than the, the moat. 
And uh, last but not least, actually, no, I'll do two more. Um, this is the Wii, excuse me, the Concept Knives Cryo. Uh, this is their D2 budget version with uh, a satin blade in D2 and uh, uh, canvas micarta scales. As you can see, there's a little bit of patina here because as soon as I got this, I forced this guy into my pocket. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna carry this whenever I'm not <laughs> checking out a knife for review. Really, really badass blade, by the way. Last but not least is the USA made Kershaw bare knuckle okay and as you can see it's quite a bit bigger and you know the the, the mode is not a very big knife it's uh something that i expected to be small um now that i have it in my hand that i've been carrying it and then i've been you know checking it out uh, against a few other knives i'm like holy crap that is a small blade and i mean if you look at it this is this is how it looks in my hand all right <laughs> it's uh it's it's pretty small it's it's actually a pretty small as you can see from just the swell of my hand all the way to the very tip uh it's not that big of a of a uh a knife now as far as the dimensions are concerned okay uh we're looking at an overall length of just over six point uh, around 6.2 inches um the blade length is about 2.66 uh just under 2.7 um the scales are actually i, I want to say oh man um, about three and a half. Yeah, I'd say, let me look here. Let's see here. One, two, three. Yep. It's just over three and a half. And uh, that gives it an overall length, like I said, 6.2 inches. Very thin profile as far as the blade is concerned. You're looking at uh, thickness behind the edge at zero uh, at point um, one, which is uh, pretty... <laughs> pretty freaking thin. I mean, uh, you have the Delicas that are at, at 0 0.09. You have the uh, the Chaparral's, I believe, that are 0 0.09. Those are uh, slicey and very dicey. These, this is just a hair, just a hair um, thicker than that. And I mean, it's not a full fat, flat grind, but um, this particular grind, I mean, it's it's fantastic for this particular knife you're looking at a nice drop point blade with a flat grind it's not a full flat but it's enough to be able to go ahead and, and bring that sliciness uh into fruition when you're going to be using it for tasks and while it's a small blade it feels really good in the hand uh it has some jimping here that extends from the very base of the blade right here uh the, the base of the spine and it goes up about, I want to say 40% up the spine of the actual blade itself. So when you hold it, you have this uh, really nice uh, tactile feel on the uh, the back of the blade right here. And it allows you to be able to go ahead and, you know, work with, say, like push cuts or just, you know, going through twine, that sort of thing, you know, in a, uh, a kind of a pressured motion. So if you need to use this for something that's a little bit more than just, your, you know, your average, you know, cutting of mail and that sort of thing, which 90% of EDCers do, um, you're going to know that because of the, the construction and just because of the, the overall um, design, uh, you will be able to go ahead and use it for stuff that's a little bit more heavy duty, which is nice to know. Um, it does run on bearings. Um, I did figure that out pretty quickly. I mean, the action, you know, dictates that, yeah, this thing, it fires out with authority and you will know that it is on bearings. Now, as far as the hardware, the hardware as well as the scale are anodized, but the scale itself um, in this particular model, the I believe it's the 2005A, it's anodized in bronze. And then you have a, more of like kind of like a bronze goldish anodized hardware you have the uh, the pivot collar here with the uh, t8 screw you have uh in fact i want to say let me look here and just make sure this is a t6 let me see if this uh opens these screws here all right it's free spinning so that means it's not t6 that is a great sign let me look at the t8 right here and it does catch so ladies and gentlemen this is a t8 uh through the hardware and the um, the pivot, so that's that's also a really good sign because uh, we has has taken the fact that you know T sixes are, are the scourge of the uh, the the knife my, uh, market and the knife maintenance uh, market. They are the uh, <laughs> the source of many headaches across of the knife industry for people that need to take these knives down, service them, put them back together, and and just you know really get the best out of their knives. I, I personally hate 
having uh, a knife that has T6 screws because they're so easy to be able to go ahead and strip. And this one uh, luckily does not. You have one screw that takes care of the clip. I'm gonna assume that the clip actually goes into the scale a little bit there to kind of give it that extra rigidity. And the clip itself, when it falls, you, um, you probably will be able to see it here, but when it falls, it actually falls on the back side of the scale and not on the frame lock side. Okay, and for being a small knife, it actually uh, actuates really well, um, you know, seeing as how it's a frame lock flipper, uh, you'd think, okay, with it being so small, it's really easy to be able to go ahead and, and put pressure on the, uh, the frame lock. I mean, if you hold it and try to flick it the wrong way, it will uh, mess with your finger a little bit. And that's one gripe that I do have with this, this particular knife, um, you know, that um, you have to be able to uh, get used to this knife. Once you have a, like a bigger knife or even other knives that you that you have in your collection, um, when you switch to something like this, which I mean, it's a great little office knife. It's a great little, you know, general EDC knife. Um, you have to remember that uh, because of the way that it's designed, being that it's a frame lock, that it's small, and even the flipper tab with it being so uh, kind of small there, it's, it's, it's kind of a small little pecker right there. Um, with the uh, with one, one two three little four uh, jimping marks there, um, you you have to remember how to be able to go ahead and actually this or because if not your index finger is going to get fatigued pretty quickly, and by fatigue I mean it's going to get annoyed the hell out of it and you're going to start feeling it. You're really going to feel it once you uh, once you flick this a couple of times. I know that that's happened to me in the past. So you know I did want to go ahead and um, and talk about that. So um, okay about the handle. Now this handle uh, has been, uh, they've, they've uh, polished it. What they do is they anodize it, then they stonewash it, and then they blacken it a little bit, okay? That's pretty freaking awesome. I mean, just so I can kind of give you a, uh, a point of reference, this is the, uh, the ZT0801Ti, and this has been bronzed uh, and stonewashed, okay, previously. This, was, this did not come this way from ZT, okay? And um, what you can do is, um, as a little bit of a tip, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, as this starts to dull out, you can take a little bit of Windex and uh, kind of work it through, okay? And it'll actually help bring out and help that um, anodization pop quite a bit. And this is the anodized and stonewashed uh, Wii mode, as you can see between the two. This has a little bit of a stonewashing here, but it's not nearly as... Uh, as pronounced as the the uh, the weathering and the stone wash that's on here with that anodization, okay. So I really like that attention to detail that uh, we uh, did to that. And uh, aside from that, there is another uh, little bit of detail that I noticed. Okay, so I, I just just a disclaimer from the very beginning. I'm going to say this. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, bead blasted finishes. I'm not in. I uh, I owned a Civivi Elementum. Uh, the version that came out in S35VN and I got rid of it specifically because of the fact I liked everything except for the fact that the blade was stonewashed, excuse me, was bead blasted. It said it was stonewashed on the Blade HQ website when I bought it. I immediately picked it up the first day it was available and when it got to me, I mean, I paid for priority and I looked at it and I'm like, oh my God, that's great. I hate it. And I got rid of it immediately uh, because of the fact that it had a bead blasted finish. Now, this is a little bit different, okay? so. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that nice and close so you can see it, okay? Now, this particular finish, okay, what they've done is they've taken the knife, they've bead blasted it, and then they've stonewashed it, okay? So to kind of give you a uh, bit of a reference, okay, I'm gonna take this guy out. I'm gonna take this guy out, okay? And I'm gonna take this guy out right here. This is nice and big. All right, so this is the stonewash finish that's typically provided by companies like Concept Knives or uh, even uh, say this one right here from CJRB. Uh, I really like it. I think it's the working man's finish and it's my favorite finish actually if I had to go ahead and choose one. The second favorite um, is a black wash finish and that's something that Kershaw actually does extremely well. It kind of looks like they, they acid wash it you know, and then they they, uh, they stonewash it once it's been acid washed, as you can see there. Now, um, with we with the bead blast finish, it's kind of akin to the, um, the the black wash, but it's not quite. Let me see if I can get that 
a little bit closer so you can see. Okay, um, the, the stone wash is a little bit finer on this one. It's not as, um, as uh, pronounced and as rough as the, uh, the black wash finish, and it's not as dark. Uh, it's kind of like a gray matter, uh, kind of like a gray area between um, just the standard stone wash and the black wash finish that you see, like an acid stone wash. Um, it's right there in the middle, and I like that a lot. It's, it's a really, really nice look. Um, I don't know why they, they particularly did that. I know, I know that it's gonna cost quite a bit more to be able to go ahead and have it done that way. But then again, because of the fact that this is uh, a knife that's produced through Wii, um, Wii doesn't really pull any punches when it comes to releasing their knives. If you've seen some of this stuff, and uh, well, let's be honest, some of what they charge for their stuff and some of what people purchase, you know, the price that people actually purchase these knives with, it's actually not that bad because, uh, with this particular knife, you're getting a lot of really premium high quality materials. I mean, including, you know, the anodized hardware and the scales. I mean, look at this polished anodized backspacer that they have here. Let me go ahead and put that in the light. That is really, really nice. All of this stuff here with the blade uh, wash, you're looking at $169 and they have different variants. They have, you know, a blue version. They have this bronze one. They have a, a, another one, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of like a blackened version. Um, and I mean, there's there's a little bit of, you know, uh, color and a little bit of pop for everybody. Um, and that's something I really, really like about it. Um, I didn't think I'd like that bead blast, uh, that bead blast bleh, slash stone wash uh, look, that bead blasted stone wash. There we go. <laughs> But um, I, it's kind of warmed up to me. Now, um, for lefties, you got to get used to using the clip on the right-hand side or just using the, uh, the standoff that they keep here in the back, right here between the back spacer that's been cut out uh, to be able to go ahead and put a lanyard and just kind of slip it in your pocket. It can be one of those knives as well. Um, but the truth is it's not tapped for uh, left-handed carry. Sorry, guys, it is what it is. Um, it is manual. I don't know if we has ever done a, an assisted or or um, speed assisted um, knife. And it's just weird if they would have ever done that. Um, I, I have not felt any lock stick on this particular knife. And I, while I did not uh, take it apart, uh, the truth is while I've been using it to cut, I can tell you because of the belly on this blade, this thing slices like a freaking madman. I mean, I can literally choke my finger up to the very, very top. I think that, that Ben uh, banters from you know, what is up guys, and the, you know, the, the guy that came out with the Wii Banter. I think that he'd like this knife a lot if he was into, um, you know, the titanium scales, that sort of thing. He's a pretty, um, you know, like basic guy. He has these needs. He has very specific things that he wants to see in a knife, which is why he released his his Banter. And ironically, he released it through Wii Knife Company. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than this, but the materials on this one, I mean, for the size, for the materials, and for the finish, and just the, the, the attention to detail that you get for something like this. Uh, number one, it's it's a, a good homage to, you know, Old Stop Hell's designs. Uh, number two, it's high quality. You're getting CPMS 35 VN steel that's imported from the US. Number three, it's costing you what, less than $170 uh, for any one of the variants. And we're talking, you know, nice premium materials. Guys, this is... This is pretty good, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Now, um, if, if I would say one thing, and, I, and I'm going back to what I said before about the flipper, um, I'm so used to the fact that Ostop had all of these different uh, versions of, of knives that he's released that had that basically a front flipper variation. Um, the Tulip had it, the Bestec Ivy had it, the Metamorph had it, and this is the first one that I've actually held and used of his that has the, um, the flipper tab. Now, I do I do know that they came out with variants for the Metamorph uh, that had a flipper tab. If I am not mistaken, um, I didn't. I do know that they had different materials version for that. But um, the the fact of the matter is, because it's such a small knife, um, there are going to be people who are going to have difficulty opening this knife. Okay, it's not really for everybody in that aspect. And um, initially. I will tell you that there is a break in period because of the fact that this is a bead blasted and stone washed. Anytime you have something like this, um, uh, where it's where it's handled this way and you haven't done uh, the, um, the work yourself, um, the truth is what happens is in the pivot area, um, the companies tend to keep 
the area nearest to the pivot uncovered and they don't they don't put any protective coating on it while they're working on this to keep that area smooth so then what happens is that area is finished just like the rest of the knife and it becomes a little bit more difficult to be able to go ahead and actuate it to open it to close it that sort of thing and uh, it kind of takes away from the luster and the overall quality of the knife. Now, um, that's not to say that this is a bad knife. I mean, the, the knife itself, it opens extremely well, um, and then it's just gonna get better in time, okay? And I mean, like I said, you flick it open, it opens with authority. I mean, I have maybe misfired this once out of all of the times that I've actually fired this thing out and uh, flicked it open. This thing has maybe, maybe misfired once, okay? And that says a lot. Now. Um, Overall, okay, like I said, uh, just kind of a little bit of a recap. It's uh, just about 6.2 inches in length, You're looking at 2.66 inches in uh, the blade length, and just over three and a half inches in the scale. So, you know, it's not a big knife uh, per se. There are a lot of knives that are, that are much bigger than this. Uh, that perform as well, probably like this. It, it does fit a niche because it's, it's higher quality materials and just a nice compact package. Um, but if you want me to be completely honest, um, looking at his other knives that he's done, if I had to put the knives that he had in order, this would not be first. This would not be second. This would probably be third or last in line. That's not to say it's a bad knife. I just prefer his other designs to this one. Now, um, did we take this uh, design and, and do it right for him? I mean, if he, they meant to go ahead and release it this way, then I gotta tell you, they did a really good job because I, I really like how this looks. They did sell me on that bead blasted uh, stone wash look. It's something that I'm just not used to, but I'm warming up to, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like it. Um, but like I said, in the pivot area um, of the actual blade itself, if that's not coated while they're doing this kind of work, um, it uh, it's a bit of overkill to have this sort of thing because then what happens is um, that rough area is what the, um, the bearings are going over. So you're not having a smooth surface like that of say, you know, a, uh, a satin washed blade. Uh, let me see if I have one here. Uh, here's one right here, all right. This is a satin wash blade. And uh, this one is actually on bearings, but it runs pretty smooth. You know, oh, wow, that was a dirt moment if I've ever uh, known one. It runs really smooth because of the fact that this is a satin blade, okay? And that's fine, it's uh, no big deal. But in this particular case, if this is done wrong, then it takes a while for the uh, the area around this, uh, this blade to, to basically break in. And that's because of the fact that the bearings need to go ahead and cre recreate their track on uh, the blade itself. So again, it, it's, you know, things that you need to consider when you're looking at this knife. Um, I really, really like this. It gives me kind of like an Iron Man vibe looking at this um, kind of like this polished uh, backspacer um, that has that little cutout specifically for you to be able to go ahead and attach a lanyard to it with that little standoff. That's really nice. It's a nice little touch. Um, and it's the only area I think in the whole thing that has been, um, uh, polished like that. Everything else has been anodized. You know, they have the pivot, the pivot collar, um, everything. It, it looks really, really awesome, but not polished to that particular point. So uh, that being said, this is the Wii Moat. Uh, this is uh, knife uh, model 2005A from uh, Wii Knife Company. Um, huge shout out to Wii for sending this out. Huge shout out to um, the Apex Passer on for going ahead and providing this for uh, me to go ahead and check out. They know that um, I was really interested in checking it out after Blade Show, uh, excuse me, SHOT Show 2020. Unfortunately, Blade Show uh, did not occur in 2020. Hopefully 2021 is a different story. Hopefully we get SHOT Show in 2021. Uh, and if you feel like watching some of that coverage, guys, check out my playlist from uh, SHOT Show 2020. I do have it on the, uh, the channel and hopefully I will have some 2021 shot show footage uh with eric and i um soon hopefully in january they do end up having that particular event and i cannot wait to go ahead and pass by the wii booth to go ahead and see what they have in store maybe they even have the new the, the mallory designed uh the hadros that was in uh the other video that we did <laughs> but in any case um just remember guys it really doesn't matter uh what size of a knife that you end up carrying i mean you can carry you know anything from a uh a kershaw knives bare knuckle to the moat. But just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. Guys, you've been great. I'm Carlos. See you guys later. This is going in the pocket.
I'll see you soon. Peace.